Hey guys, it's Kim here and say hello to Becky. Hey Becky! Hello. Um, so this is a stream VOD for uh, one of our craft streams where Becky today is going to teach us all how to make a dragon nest bell jar. Um, as you can see, we've got the materials on screen here down below. Uh, Becky's camera is flickering like an absolute mother trucker. Um, but we decided we're going to go with it because this is the smallest tech issue we've had so far today, which is why I've, I've positioned her awkwardly and covered her up with the bottom camera because that's how we're going to do this. <laughs> we're going to focus on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't don't worry about Becky's camera for now. Um, but yeah, if you want to join uh, join in, these are the materials that you're going to need below me. Uh, so clay, foil, uh, materials for a base, which can include card or foam or wood, egg shapes, uh, so uh, polystyrene, like materials like polystyrene or foam, um, etc. Becky's going to show you as well, like uh, give you some ideas about egg shapes as well in a second. Uh, paint, a hot glue gun. Does it have to be a hot glue gun? Uh, a hot glue gun is going to make some bits of this process easier. Uh, like you don't need a hot glue gun, but we're going to go through one technique of decorating an egg, which involves a hot glue gun. Okay, so cool. Okay. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to do that technique, but I will use a hot glue gun quite a bit today. Okay. Um, and then also a two litre clear drinks bottle, plastic. Dr. Pepper is ideal. We are not sponsored. Thank you. Uh, and then for egg embellishments, well. yeah, things like craft foam, drawing drawing pins drawing pins fabric card things like that and then some sort of nesting material like string straw and i can't read that last bit stones stones, stones. <laughs> um but yeah also um uh, we didn't mention this because we only set this up after we uh did the other streams but um if you want full written instructions um on uh well, I guess the instructions and the materials that you need, um, check yeah. out the video description. And also, Becky has very kindly uh, put full written instructions up on her Kofi account. Uh, link in the video description below. I probably should have set up a freaking Moobot for that, but I'll do that <laughs> later. It's fine. Um, we'll that, so, yeah, if you want written instructions, check out the links in the video description below. Stream chat. I'll get on it in a second once Becky gets underway. Um, but, yeah, apolog apologies for the flickering that's just the world we live in right now we're going with it this is like our third camera setup as well it's just I know, yeah. right? we're trying we're trying but yeah right so, take let's it away start Becky. some crafts so i've got these polystyrene eggs but uh which i just bought off amazon um but a lot of people have said that they can't get a hold of eggs so i'm going to show you a foil egg to start with also the advantage with a foil egg is we're going to cover that one with clay and that means we can put it in the oven to dry quickly during the stream so that will because uh, you can't don't put polystyrene in the oven <laughs> do you not <laughs> just a little safety tip there uh but yeah so we're going to start with a, some foil because it's our favorite material so why are we making dragon eggs today why 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 is that um why is that what why why <laughs> Why, why did we make dragons the first week? Why did we make Totoro the other week? Yeah. Why does anyone do the things they do? Why? Um, why are you the way that you are? I mean, because I'm obsessed with dragons. Mm -hmm. And someone, we were asking for craft suggestions last time and someone suggested like what, someone suggested dragon eggs and someone else said that uh, Punish Props had a great tutorial and they do for making like a fully foam uh, Game of Thrones style egg oh. but a lot of people don't work with EVA foam or don't have access to that so I thought we'd just do some fun easy ones and a bell jar is a nice way to display them uh, yeah and yeah could you just cheat massively and get like a legit bell jar you could buy a bell jar Ikea have some great ones at the moment also not sponsored um, <laughs> the other way to do it is to buy like a vase that's the right kind of shape and turn it upside down. Like Kim has made me a terrarium in a vase that would be perfect as a bell jar oh, if turned yeah. upside down. How's that boy doing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I've turned turned the one that's suffering into the sun a bit more. Okay. Uh, and he seems to be opening up if not fully recovered. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Because I did uh, I did tear the roots a little bit when I transferred it. So um, ooh, I was a bit worried about root trauma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did suffer a bit. The other one is now doing better. He was always the lesser of the two. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try and create a foil egg that's roughly the same as my other eggs because 
three of these small legs just about fit in a bottle. So I'm going to do three small legs and we're going to do a big egg that just sits outside so I can show you some other techniques. Yeah, if you're doing a clay egg and you want to put it in the oven or you're using polymer clay or any of the kind of oven baked clays, then you need to have a foam center, not a polystyrene center. Also, you can just, you know, make these and you can, if you haven't got foam eggs, you can do them all like this. Um, so I've just made a foam shape that looks roughly like an egg and I've kind of pressed it against a solid surface to really mold it. And there's an egg. Yay, so, there we go. I've got the clay, I've got paper clay today, but uh, any air dry or oven dry clay would work. Uh, I'm just gonna take, my first step is I'm just gonna cover the whole of the foil. Uh, so I'm just gonna create a nice kind of nice smooth base to actually work some clay shapes into. Okay. Don't worry about me, I'm just fiddling with things and just like, you know, make, trying to make this look bigger, bigger. Since since the main focus is trying to hide your flicker. <laughs> Someone's just asked, could you flatten the foil enough to make the egg? So I'm gonna show off something very quickly now. Here we go. Um, gonna, it's gonna be chair cam. Here we go. She's off. That's it. Stream's over. <laughs> right. So this was going around the internet a while ago, which was making uh, shiny metal balls out of uh, foam, uh, out of foil even. Uh, and this is what you end up with. Uh, you end up with uh, uh, yeah. a, a nice it. shiny little ball. Wow. That took a lot of hammering and wet sanding and could still be sanded. You could sand it completely shiny, but that you basically have to hammer it and then wet sand it. That looks uh, like a pearl. It's, it's quite incredible, but it does take a lot of work. But yeah. yeah, so if you wanted to create an entirely foil egg and get it to that stage, you absolutely could. But yeah, it, it that would take us three hours just to get that out of an egg. Uh, so we're not going to do that for the whole Let's thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> of course she'd say that. <laughs> uh... So yeah, I'm just smoothing, pushing this round my egg to get a nice, tight, smooth egg shape. Nice. Someone um, in chat said, could you use real, uh, like, blown out eggs? Yes, you could, but you'd have to be very delicate just because uh, yeah. eggshells are flexible. Yeah. Uh, breakable. <laughs> breakable. Very, very they are breakable. meant to crack from the inside. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I've got my sort of egg shape. I, I am doing this fast again. These are not as perfect as I would probably make them if I was spending a lot of time on them, but we've got three hours. So... <laughs> We're blasting through this. Um, so we've got a nice kind of egg shape. I'm going to put little bubbles on these. So I'm going to make kind of little little bubble shapes and then I'm going to attach them. It's kind of... If anyone's seen How to Train Your Dragon and if you haven't, what are you doing? Go and see that film. Or go and see all three films because they're fantastic. Uh, then um, Astrid's helmet has this kind of dragon bobble pattern. It's It's very much that kind of bubbly egg pattern that hmm. we're going to go for here. Okay. Um, someone said, Worker Drain says, can you blow out an egg and fill it with hot glue? I feel like that yes. would... Yes! Yeah? Oh, genius I idea! So... Well, that would be a lot of hot glue though, right? Hot glue. So let's talk about hot glue for a minute because hot glue is a wonderful thing. Um, but hot glue can be used for moulding things as well. So actually what you could do is fill it and then crack the eggshell off and just use the hot glue oh, mould like that was glue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then actually what you'd have would be a... Oh, so now I'm getting ideas. Who said this? Why <laughs> did you drone. do this? Work a drone. Okay, work a drone. Look, because there's amazing things you can do with hot glue and it acts as a natural kind of diffuser for light. So if you were really clever, I might try and do this this week now because I'm really, that's just gone into my head like a kind of flash of lightning. Uh, you could affix an LED inside a blown out eggshell. Okay. And, and then... then you could fill it with hot glue and then you could crack the eggshell off and, you know, attach the uh, bottom trailing threads of the LED to a battery. And what you'd get would be a glowing semi-see-through egg. That sounds cool. Sarquin asks, would it, wouldn't it be super hard not to get bubbles though, bubblies? I mean, you would get bubbles, but like these are dragon eggs. Who says what they look like? Yeah. You don't want bubbles in your dragon eggs? Maybe dragons have bubbly eggs. I've got an idea. 
what if you were to get some of that um, glow in the dark? You know, you can buy glow in the dark powder and mix that oh, in. You can get it from the lovely guy who makes the black. Yeah. Culture hustle. Culture hustle who make the blackest black. Okay. So, they yeah. Make... Yeah, I mean, you could also do this with resin if you've got resin. It's just we're, we are very much on a home craft system yeah. right now yeah. where you're kind of, what have you got in the house? Yeah, of so go mad. If you were being really clever, you'd make a dragon out of clay, like a dragon fetus. You'd put the dragon fetus into the egg, you'd cover it with resin, and you'd get like a glowing, you could see the dragon inside. Oh my god, that does sound cool. <laughs> that does sound really cool. The possibilities, man. The possibilities. People, stop giving me ideas. I'm trying to do these kind of eggs right now. Yeah. yeah. I feel like with, with dragon nest eggs, you can be as weird and creative as you want. Obviously, we're just kind of showing you the basics i guess and like as ever because this yeah. is like a quarantine lockdown stream we're trying to show you with the kind of like most base um in, uh, uh, materials that you can buy and order um just so you can keep yourself distracted while the world is going to heck in a handbasket um so yeah if you want to do it with like fancy materials like resin and an entire if hot glue gun someone egg wants to make that like glow see if someone wants to get i mean i am thinking of ordering some glow powder from culture hustle uh but if someone wants to go for the light up egg with the dragon inside, please, I want to see that. I just want someone to make that. It's a lucky that's, boy. That's how our bobble is looking. I'm probably going to leave it like that because we're a bit pushed for time. And because when it's in a jar with two other eggs, you will only see one side. So I can get away with this right now. What if you turn it around? No, because we're going to put it in a jar like that. And then there'll be other eggs behind it. So you won't see. Okay, fine. Ha! Hold hold that egg right up to the top camera just so we can really see the bobbling. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's great. So that's some real nice depth. And when you paint that, that will come up really well. Mm. Um, but I'm going to leave that because we're pushed for time. Yep. And I'll also put that in the oven when we're doing the next stage so that it dries out and can be painted during this session. We are powering through. Oh, my God. Here's one I Whoa. made earlier. Um, no, I didn't make anything earlier yeah, okay, this time. And I really regret it. I should have made some stuff <laughs> earlier. Oops. We're now going to look at doing a uh, drawing pin egg. A drawing pin egg? So does anyone know? I mean, people know drawing pins or thumbtacks or whatever other people call them, but they come in usually silver or brass and you use them to pin uh, pin things to cork boards. Uh, but this is, this is... Oh God, a phone is buzzing and I can't tell you which one. Uh... But this was one of the um, the kind of top ways that started going around after Game of Thrones of making eggs. It's really quick. It's really easy. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to, we're going to quickly bash through this one. So start from the bottom, put a pin in the base. And then just start almost like we did with the dragon scales in our very first uh, craft stream. Just start building up and overlapping on top. I will try and do this a bit closer to the up camera so we can see what's going on. Yeah. So just pressing in the pins and overlapping each time. That looks cool. It looks like yeah. scales, doesn't it? It immediately looks like scales. Yeah. This is a really great way. I think I should have started at the top now, actually. I'm going to change this and I'm going to start at the top because <laughs> of how I want my scales to go. Brilliant. Remember, there are no failures, everyone. Mistakes are part of life and are natural. Yeah. So we're going to start at the top for this one. <laughs> <sighs> okay, Brilliant. and this is also why I've chosen small legs, because I can probably bash through this quite quickly during the stream, rather than yeah. it taking ages. If you do a big egg, you will need a lot of drawing things. Yeah, I can imagine. And a lot of patience. So Space Bear in uh, chat, and this has reminded me as well, um, like uh, I used to make um, Christmas baubles like this. Um, so you ah. get like a polystyrene shape, you know, like an egg or a sphere or something like that, and um, pin in sequins. Um, so I, I used to pin, pin in big, big sequins or like, yeah, with a drawing pin. And it's, I've still got some of them actually in my basement. Um, there we go. You should, yeah. uh, you know. It really hurts your fingers though. Really hurts your fingies. <laughs> To be honest, you know, I do a lot of clay work and things like the the tips of my fingers are just callous messes right now. <laughs> and actually, m most of them have glue gun burns on at the moment because I was trying to do something the other day and I forgot that uh, wooden beads, if you are gluing them onto things, have holes in them and the glue can go straight through them and burn your fingers. Oh, that's fun. 
Yeah, so That's I did that. So uh, both my uh, both my fingers on my right hand are quite burnt at the moment. Ooh. So if you look, this I think was a packet of eighty drawing pins. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And I am going to use them all on wow. an egg-sized egg. An egg-sized egg. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> reference. <laughs> I mean, you is it I mean. is it a chicken egg, a duck egg, an ostrich egg? A chicken uh, egg sized egg. Oh, imagine if it was an ostrich egg. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could do really big eggs. And actually, if you do want to do really big oh. eggs, do go and look at Punish Props tutorial uh, for because uh, they do. He does a foam egg, and I think the pattern is on their website. Uh, and you can make a really big foam shaped egg and then decorate it how you want. And you could use this technique with foam. Uh, or you could just paint it, or you can create foam scales on it, which we're going to do a bit of later. Okay, we have a metal egg. Hold up higher. There we go. Look at that. Nice. That oh, it looks cute. so good. Like, and that's immediate. That that just happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's just happened overnight. So, so that's a really great way to make a lot of quick ones, and you can add paint effects to this. You can colour them really nicely with a lot of people do them with nail varnish. Mm -hmm. We're oh. gonna add, um, we're just gonna add some kind of a wash to it, which would need to be uh, mixed with glue rather than water to kind of stick to it. But that'll just give some depth in the cracks. So yeah, got two two eggs almost. I mean, one needs to dry and be painted, but we've got a couple of eggs on the go. Yeah, nice. So what, what are you going to do next for eggs? Are you going to do more eggs? We're now going to do a hot glue egg. Okay. So I've got my hot glue gun on over here. Mm -hmm. uh, did uh, I just I... miss out something? But like, how? Where, what was this shape? Where did you get this egg shape from? I So I bought these polystyrene shapes uh, from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got a bag full of these in different sizes. So, Ooh. you know, you can buy these for like a couple of quid. Um, you could absolutely use Warhammer ink, Deg. Um, but yeah, I just I'd add like a I'd add a thickener to it to to kind of dig into the grooves on this. Um, so just something like glue or Mod Podge or even like a bit of clay, just something to kind of grab hold of that. Mm. Um, so right, let's just uh, do a do a little egg egg conversation. If you need to hold your egg and you'll want to paint it or put stuff on it, et cetera, et cetera, get a, uh, what, what is this called? Skewer. Kebab skewer. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking cocktail stick. And yeah, that's, not that's a bit too small. So, and stab it through the bottom. See? And then, yeah. And then get a bottle of some kind. I have some a teriyaki one and you can sit it in there and that means you can work on your egg without having to touch it nice so, can you hold that flat up to the top cam there you go like that. so yeah i've just stabbed it through and then i you can balance it in a bottle to leave it to dry or you can work with it like that nice while you're doing it so yeah um so we'll probably stab through like the great thing with this one is if we want to paint it we can take out that bottom Pin, pin and then just stab through and uh hold it the same way so yeah gonna i should probably put a hole in the bottom of this one mm. actually ready for that later yeah. yeah so we're just gonna use a hot glue gun to make some details on this egg mm -hmm. so i'm gonna draw some details that i can follow with the glue gun because i feel like winging it with glue gun might be just a bit much for even me <laughs> uh so we'll go for let's go swirly with this shall we I'm trying to think. I found the link. There it is. Hold on a minute. Uh... So yeah, I'm just creating some sort of, you know, swirly shapes. I haven't really thought about this egg much, but you could do any shapes on this. You could do a proper, like, you could do your bubbles with glue gun. Um, you could do, you could make like the Harry Potter golden egg, like anything that's raised, basically. So you're just creating like pretty shapes. Um, and then we're going to go over them in hot glue and then when we paint them those will be kind of embossed is embossed up yeah uh so yeah just creating some swirly shapes okay but yeah you could put symbols on it you could go really you could be really snazzy with this i just haven't really thought about it as much as i would have liked mm. so yeah what i'm doing here is i'm just glue gunning in 
you know, trying to be decent lines over the uh, over the lines I've drawn to create pretty patterns in glue. So you're creating pretty patterns in glue. Hmm. Okay. Could you like dye your eggs? You know, like do a cute little tie dye or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially people who are talking about using real legs. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a way to go with real legs. Oh, I've got a wonderful drip there. I'm going to have to turn that into something artistic. <laughs> turn failure into win. Basically, I've just used too much glue there and I've got this big bubble. It's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> um but yeah, uh, if people are using like real eggs and mount, then uh, coloring, dyeing real eggshells. Real eggshells take color dye um, and like water dispersed dyes really nicely. So yeah, hmm. definitely. Um, Basically, dragon eggs are fantasy. Feel free to play around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doom Rider says, have you tried soaking in boiled kiwi as a dye? No. I didn't realise that boils... No, I... Like, kiwi is in the fruit? Would that dye something? What what colour does that dye it? Um, you can get some crazy. wonderful blues and purples out of, like, different beetroots and things. Uh, yeah, be beetroot, I, I feel, is an obvious one, but I didn't realise kiwi could dye something. There's a lot of great natural dyes out there. There's some artists who work primarily in natural dye with, like, fabrics and yeah. using natural dye. And, yeah. So there's a lot of experiments that way. Um, just, you know, as a warning, if you're planning on putting these on your shelf, you can't, um, don't use hard boiled eggs because they will eventually go off. Yeah, real bad. And you don't want like, especially if you put it in a jar, like that yeah. is going to stink worse than durian. <laughs> like, yeah, you need to uh, future proof your eggs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, future proof it. Uh, so here's a glue gun egg. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. It, it doesn't look like much now, but when we paint it, it will look really awesome. Okay. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's so a you, bunch of bobbles right now. So you sharpied on the design and then you've gone over that with a glue gun to make, like, the texture. Yeah. Okay. But you could use you could use basically anything that's, you know, if you don't have a hot glue gun, anything that's going to create, like, um, depth. So I don't know if anyone has, like, these, which are... Um, Relief paints, which you use for making uh, stained glass window stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, I love them. They're great. And they come in a range of metallics and they leave like a depth. They they, they are kind of solid-y. Okay. Um, you could stick string onto your shape. You could do it out of foam. Basically anything that's just creating a design in depth is what you're trying to do with that one. Okay. Could you even carve into it as well? Like maybe just like yeah. take away and carve absolutely carve into it or you know do some fun things with them um, you could make a wooden egg if anyone wants to i know people have talked about oh woodcraft God. a bit occasionally you could carve a wooden egg and then carve your shapes into it i mean that would yeah that that's oh that's gonna take so long <laughs> that's gonna <laughs> yeah, take so long man kim dropped me some craft supplies back the other day and she dropped uh, back my chisel so i have beautiful chisel that i bought on the wood carving years ago and uh, but I'd left it in Kim's garage for a year and I literally spent most of yesterday just getting the rust off it yeah and I feel really bad that I let such a beautiful chisel fall into state oh, um, so, so I didn't realize you had a you had a um a chisel in there otherwise I would have gotten to it to you sooner no I sort of forgot about it as well and then when you see the photo I'm like, oh but that's where my chisel is right uh, it was one of those classics. Uh, right, we're Ooh. just gonna. I'm not quickly not gonna do the whole of this egg. Ooh. Before you go, Frost uh, Frost Sorg says, could you drip candle wax on the egg? That's not a good idea. Ooh, yes, basically, like, I mean, everyone seems to be coming up with incredible ideas for other things with eggs. Absolutely, go mad. I really want to people experiment with how to make eggs and send us pictures on Twitter. Like, absolutely, send us pictures yes. on Twitter. We'd love to see it. Oh want to see everyone's weird ideas of how they've managed in lockdown yeah. to survive with what things they've got in the house. Like, I do actually yeah. have a picture of Space Bear's work in progress. Do you want to see that before we go on to the next egg? 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, last stream we showed off uh, like Lord Wolfie and Charlie and Nehe's creations. So we got Space Bear has started creating a little dragon. Oh my god, it's so cute. Look at it. <laughs> so oh, that's, that's adorable. That's also, that's so small. Like I'm yeah. in awe because I hate making, because the detail just, my hands are too big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big old clump hands. So I'm just going to show you some, making some scales out of EVA foam. Um, and I'm going to turn my glue gun back on gotten that actually on knee cap bring the glue gun back at some point i'll get a tile for my glue gun and stop using a leftover piece of card <laughs> uh <laughs> it's working um so i've designed a little scale like this uh which i'm gonna make a bunch more i was planning on making a bunch more yesterday but i forgot <laughs> uh so Fair. you know life gets in the way sometimes so I'm just going to draw around this. I've found that Sharpies uh, object to uh, foam. They sort of, it sort of kills them <laughs> after object a while. To it. I object! I object to the foam! Um, actually, Biro works really well because it leaves, uh, it leaves a kind of indent, even if you can't really see it. So I'm just going to trace around this, this one scale that I've made, and then we'll glue a few whole leg just because of time, but you can get an idea. Again, like Punish Props Tutorial, they do a really cool, very Game of Thrones-y egg using uh, foam scales on top of the egg shape. Um, this is just like two millimeter craft foam, uh, which just Hobbycraft sells this. So this is kind of the one that I can, or I could easily buy before. Yeah. I have a couple of sheets of this like hidden away. Uh, Captain now, William precious. says, does it dull the Sharpies? It, yeah, yeah, they just sort of stop working after a while. Um, I killed my silver sharpie this way, which I'm very sad mm. because I love metallic. Uh, Di Dishy says as well, Polyprop sells ready-made scales. <gasps> yeah, I mean, also if I had access to my makerspace right now, I'd be doing this with the laser cutter, and it would take two seconds. <laughs> <sighs> nice. Yeah, you can cut this thin foam with scissors, but I found that my lovely new craft knife just does it so quickly and so smoothly. Uh, so I'm just going to bash a few of these out. But yeah, here is Lord Wolfie's Actually, finished no, no, uh, paper mache kitty. Kitty! There you go. So it went from looking like uh, this. Hold on a minute. So it went from looking like that to looking like this. I think that looks really good. Guys, just paper mache, as soon as you start painting it, it takes on its own life. Yeah. It's like, don't get disheartened halfway through, because it really does take, you've got to get to the end. Well, I think we uh, saw that with your Totoro, um, who I can notice is lurking in the shelves behind you. Um, yeah. But yeah, I noticed that, uh, yeah, there was a certain point where it's like, oh, God, it looks like, well, not like garbage, but it looks so like it abstract like and rabbit. weird. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets to a point you're like, oh, damn. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, suddenly it comes alive. The eyes really make it's like the eyes on the Yeah, I think that's where, a... where it came together. So, yeah. You've got like, I think there's like two or three catch lights in the eyes of that one, which is really cool. We've got some scales. Now we could just stick these on. You can use hot glue or you can use, you know, barge or uh, contact adhesive if you're more of a uh, prop maker, cosplayer. You could just stick them on direct like that. I want to give themselves a bit more. I want to fold them. Okay. So I'm just going to pinch around that point. And then in the back, I'm going to put the glue. Did I turn this back on? No, I did not. Uh oh. So close. Classic. Luckily, this one heats up really quickly. Um, but yeah, that'll give like what that just gives is that little ridge, which I think when it's painted, you can really highlight that. Bring that up there. Yeah, that's better. So yeah, and if I if I really gloss that, so if we put PVA or Mod Podge on that, you just get that real shine on that point there. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a bit of added detail that I like. Yeah. I like being snazzy. While we're waiting for the glue gun to shall we do a bit of paint? Yes. Uh, so we're going to start with our glue gun egg. And with that one, I'm just going to give it, I'm just going to paint it black. Becky, tell us what you're doing. We're painting this black. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, 
So just the, the paint is going to want to slide off the glue, but just keep like dab it, dab it in um, rather than necessarily like brushing, just really dab it into the and get all the cracks in the middle. Um, so make sure you could do this with um, spray paint, although you'd have Ooh. to cover the egg with something first if you use a polystyrene egg because uh, spray paint eats into polystyrene. Uh, so don't just spray paint it. But if you did a foil egg with glue gun, you could spray paint that. Um, mm -hmm. And that would work quite nicely. But you could also just do, you know, you could cover it with a layer of uh, gloss or matte finish and then, then spray paint it. But I use my black spray paint a lot and it's actually run out. So no, we'll not be doing that today. Yeah. Can you, today so are you using your old, old faithful Arteza paint, sir? I am using my old faithful Arteza. I'm going to buy a, some more black at some point because I'm going through that like anything. You should buy Vanta Black. Uh, I'm guessing you can use any paints, really, right? You can use any, like, poster, acrylic, nothing water-based. Uh, so, well, these are water-based acrylic, but you know what I mean? Nothing that requires water, to, so don't use watercolours. Okay. Uh, yeah, apart from that, pretty free. I mean, you could even, you could, if you want to ruin some Sharpies, you could colour this with Sharpie. Yeah. But That's, this I'm, is just... That would be pretty hardcore, wouldn't it? Yeah and you'd probably ruin a lot of pens. But this is just to create the base color. This is not the color it's going to end up. So okay. uh, you'll, we're going to do some fun things with this. This one gets exciting. Okay. Can you hold it up uh, slightly just to, to the camera just so we can see slightly a bit more? There we go. Look at that, yeah, paint that. You missed a spot there. I haven't finished. Missed a big Honestly. spot. Honestly. Right there, big old, big old spot. Okay, uh, there's a black egg, everyone. Just so uh, mm. <laughs> back to the crafts. So that's black and bubbly now. So we'll just put that to, to that side over there. I've got black on paint on me. Of course I do. Of course Wasn't you do. It wouldn't be a craft stream if you don't end up like a mucky little pup. No. So let's just glue gun some scales, some foam scales on, see how that look. So we're folding our scale in half. And then very carefully, this is hot, people. So actually, if you've got like leather tip gloves or something, it might be a good idea to wear them here. Bit of glue on there to hold in that join so that it holds that fold. And then we're just going to stick that on the egg. And hold cool. it for a second to let the glue solidify. <sighs> nice. This, this is the boring bit, watching glue dry. I mean, eh. Eh. I mean, uh, who was though. it? One of one of the Yogs crew had a really successful stream, literally just watching paint dry. Um, so it's all sorts on on Twitch, all sorts. Takes them all. So yeah, I've I've kind of guzzied that up a bit in the corner there, but there are no mistakes. But we'll do a few more of those so we can see how they look. Are you gonna paint these afterwards? I would paint this, but I'm not going to do this whole length. But yeah. I'll do a bit of paint effects on it just so we can see how it will work. Uh, Tankboy60 says, Do you have a preference for glue guns and glue sticks? I do youth work, so they're handy, but the glue never seems to hold any... Uh, never seems to hold any advice appreciated. Um, don't buy a cheap one. Like, so... If you watch the Dragon stream that we did back in before lockdown, uh, my glue gun actually died during that stream. It was so that, messed up, though. It was so dead. But that was also a £5 glue gun that I bought from Hobbycraft a while. Yeah. Um, this is the lovely... I can't remember who donated. Which Work a drone! Donated that stream. Work a drone! Thank you. Work a drone donation in that stream. And I bought this lovely B-Way glue gun that also came with a case and glue stick. And it's just better. <laughs> um... But also like the glue guns with these kind of gold tips with this hexagonal bolt, you can change the nozzle on them. So you can have smaller nozzles or bigger nozzles. They do heat up more, they are more burny, so it's difficult if you're doing craft groups. But the hotter they are, the better they are. The low heat ones do not work as well. Like you just don't get the, because you don't get that kind of curing time in the glue where it goes from hot to cold and it cures solid. So, uh, glue yeah. guns are tricky, but yeah. you spend money on them. Like, the cheap ones Oops. are just bad. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, you can go with the brands like Stanley do them and all sorts. Uh, but, yeah, it's um, it really is, you get what you pay for. 
yeah um and i know with craft groups it's really hard because you want to buy a lot and you don't want them to be too hot because of risk of burning but the best thing is with tools tools are always going to be dangerous like teach people to use them properly yeah uh, um and teach people to be aware of the fact that they're hot and they can burn you and because you need to know that even with the low heat ones uh for context what is a cheap glue gun a cheap glue gun will run you about five to ten pounds uh this one costs 40 um 25 to 50 is what i would expect to pay for a good glue gun there are more expensive ones that have like change interchangeable nozzles or have like bases or things um but yeah for a decent one to do crafts with 25 to 50 pounds nice i think it's like eternal dilemma isn't it like you could buy cheap stuff and that's with everything it's the sam vimes boots economy you could spend yeah. like piss all but you have to replace it more often or you could spend a lot of money to get a good thing that lasts a lot longer sam vimes boots economy a glue gun is an investment and it's a good investment yeah it's you know it's worth investing in a glue gun um is it worth no, just is it worth investing in a glue gun if it's for youth community and all they're going to do is shove up their noses and glue their noses shut I mean, the thing is, if you want to glue stuff together, yes. <laughs> Whether you want to glue their noses together or, or whatever. Um, but if you want stuff that, that people are going to make and they're going to stay, then yes, a you know, get one of the 25 quid ones. Uh, but yeah, get a decent, decent glue gun. Um, just let's have a look at some scale pattern. Ooh, nice. So that's just with a couple of foam ones. Um, and that looks really nice, like on the front and from the side view. You get yeah. a really nice kind of depth to that. So yeah, you, you, I'll do that whole leg later and I'll post a picture of it. Um, yeah. But there, there's a bigger, bigger foam one. Right, now we can turn the glue gun off. <laughs> right. I've got some EVA craft foam. Uh, this is, well, this is an EVA floor mat, which is why it's got weird bubbles on the bottom, uh, that costs like 10 pounds for 10 sheets of these from uh, home base, uh, like DIY stores, uh, hardware stores have foam mats for insulation and for gym floors. Uh, they're usually really cheap and you can use them for all sorts. But you could also do card or wood to build this, it wouldn't matter. So, I've got foam. Right, here is my bottle. Could you just slide it further up? There we go. There we go. Yeah. I think you're forgetting that the top camera is dead now. Okay. Forget the top cam. Forget the face cam, I've Becky. Like a, I've got a mark on this and I still keep forgetting about it. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah. My bottle, I've cut in half. Uh, that's, that's as simple as that. And I used a craft knife for it, but you could probably actually stab it and do it with scissors if you needed to. But yeah, that's my bottle. So I'm going to take my bottle and I'm gonna place it on my foam and I'm gonna draw around it with a biro. Are the drawing utensils available? Are available. <laughs> yeah, it depends what, if you've got cardboard, you could use any sort of thing. If you've got wood, you might wanna use a pen. If you've got foam, don't ruin your Sharpie. Uh, right, that is the first part of our base. I do need the glue gun. Stop turning, glue my glue gun uses. <laughs> Stop turning your glue gun off. Well, it's good. This one has a bottom switch as well, so you can turn it on and off oh. while still keeping it plugged into the main. And it. Um, oh, she fancy. Yeah. This is. I really like this one. Hmm. Uh, right, so I'm just going to cut out this circle, which is going to be interesting because I'm really bad at circles. Brilliant. Cut towards trot, everyone. Uh, everyone, cut towards trot. He is. In this case, he is. What did we decide Over east of way. you? Yeah, that way. Yeah, that that way. Uh, I'm not. How do, how do one cut towards trot that way? There you go. But seriously, cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. Yeah, don't put your fingers in front of your knife. Always put your fingers on the other side to steady your material, because also slippery material will lead to mistakes. And uh, you don't want you don't want to go to A and E right now. It's... No, it's a bad time to be in A and E. Yeah. Uh, like also make sure if you're doing crafting at home uh make sure you've got like do have first aid on hand yeah like do have plasters do have antiseptic like the accidents are going to happen i have glue gun burnt myself so many times um don't eat the glue 
all the clay. Don't eat the glue, all the clay. Don't eat crafts. Speaking of which, uh, Jesse asks in chat, what kind of clay do you use for making dragons? I might have a go. I have nothing else to do at home. So you can have a look in our guides. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me bring that up. Let me uh, bring that up for you, Jesse. Guides are available. But yeah, I use, uh, I always use air dry clay. I use a bulky clay for the base of my dragons. So I will use, at the moment, I'm using Crayola Model Magic. It takes a bit of uh, trial and error to get that right. Uh, but paper clay works just as well. You could also use polymer clay or anything like that. Um, and then for the details, I use uh, I use epoxy sculpt, but paper clay, polymer clay, again, something that's finer and holds details. Your first layer is just to kind of bulk up and your second layer is the nice layer. So that's how I do my dragon. I've done one ring. I'm now going to take this ring and I'm going to put it on my foam again. And I'm just going to draw a ring that's about a couple of centimeters bigger than so i'm just going to eyeball this but if you've got things like a compass you could measure it and draw a perfect circle but that's not what the kind of craft thing we do here huh a perfect circle it was a great band <laughs> yeah we're not that precise here we're just um, so i've got two foam circles i'm just gonna just because uh my cutting is terrible and eva foam can get a bit jagged at the edge as you can see there I'm just going to quickly sand down the edges just to make it nice and smooth. Mm. It's the great thing about foam is it can be sanded. It's it's a marvelous thing. I only started using foam about two months ago and I love it. Yeah. Right. I'd really like this to be just a little smaller so that it fits in here. But remember the mark on the cutting board. Remember the mark. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, and I'm actually going to cut. I think I've so. When I have more time, I'd like to cut this bottom base a bit smaller and make this a bit thinner so that the bottle fit sits over the top of it really snugly. Right mm -hmm. now, it's just kind of balancing. But you get the idea. Yeah. So that sideways will look like that, which is starting to turn into something. And you could layer up this bottom base as much as you want to kind of get a good, good effect. If you want to have something really ornate and kind of Victorian, you could layer it a lot. Uh, you could make like swirls on it. You could add detail later. Like there's a lot of lot of things you can do there. Mm -hmm. So we just position that in the middle. Did I have I already told people circle. about my um, sanding accident when I was a kid? I think I have. I think it was the first craft stream we did. I talked about my uh, my sanding accident, <laughs> where I sanded my finger off. <laughs> yeah, we're good at things. Um, everyone, everyone, remind me in chat if I've done if I've gone through this already. Because if not, I'll tell you again. <laughs> oh, what you got well, there? I've got some stones. Mm. So I'm going to use these to make my nest. Now, what you want for your nest is you want something that's the same size as this, but you don't want to glue. What you could glue directly onto this if you're feeling very confident. I never feel that confident. Um, so I actually have this lid. It's okay. the perfect size to fit inside my bottle. Oh, wow. I, yeah, that was completely random. I didn't plan that. Um, but that means I can build my nest inside there and it will be perfectly fit inside. I could actually glue that down to the base and that would probably work quite nice. Anyway, enough spitball. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to build a little stone wall, essentially. So um, in your materials list, you also suggested things like straw and what else did you suggest? A bunch of things. Um, so what could people do if they don't have stone? I mean, it, it depends also what kind of nest you want. If you look, a lot of people make them out of like string or straw and they create like a proper bird's nest. I thought dragons deserved something a bit different. So they're having a stone nest. Okay. Um, and I've got stones. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you just want to create that kind of nest shape that then you can sit your eggs in. Okay. So, oh. Example. Yeah, I sort of want to show that sideways, but I really can't. Uh, so it will look like that. Just about see it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, once I've glued down the stones, I can do this better. Um, I really want to put all three eggs in, which just about fit in the bottle. But uh, right now we'll probably end up with one egg in there because uh, that's where we are. <laughs> if I if I had the inclination, I would absolutely love to create some sort of system that you could drop um, dry ice in. So yeah, I did think about that the other day because I've got a I've got Q 
humi- humidifier. Yeah. That I've used to create like a dragon that breathes smoke before. Um, and uh, yeah, I was thinking whether I could do something with that emitting like steam from the bell jar. Yeah. Macamenia suggested um, gold hordes and a healing potion. Yeah, you could get like fool's gold or something and like layer up like fake gold and um, like yeah. a healing potion. That's a good idea. Like a little, you, I, you could maybe even create like, I don't know, a chest or something like that. That's a really cool idea. I mean, like someone's done uh, big dragon eggs and like with a thrift store kind of chest, uh, like fully lined this chest in fabric and put all the three eggs in it like they're properly from Game of Thrones. You can yeah. do all sorts of great things. Like I'm just, as we've said before with these streams, we're just showing you like basic, yeah. basic skills. And then we want you to go mad. We apply you with the magic and no, we apply you with the basics and you guys go and do the magic to however you like it. Um, Thanatos says maybe there's a hot glue gun dragon that's really happy at this artwork. <laughs> I hope so. That yeah. sounds like a lovely idea. And Zap says I really want to make a dragon curled around a clutch of eggs with the eggs made from charcoal so you could actually cook on them. Well, that's an idea Ooh. anyway. Well, that's, that's a cool idea you know... actually. Yeah, using charcoal briquettes as like the nest. That's a cool idea. Okay, so just, you know, immediately, I'm going to hold this up in front of my camera just yeah. for a bit. Just so, so you're going to have to hold it quite high. Like, think about where your face is. There it is. A little bit higher. There you go. Nice. Also, really good so, yeah. view of the uh, inside as well. That looks good. Yeah. So, yeah, we're starting to get something there. So I'm just going to, you know, I'll do this with one egg for now because that's where we are. And, yeah. Look, that now uh, comes away from my base because I've only glued the stones. I didn't glue it to the template. Nice. So that's now that can now sit on here. Which is our proper base. Okay, so okay, I see you're using it as a template. I got it. Perfect. Yeah. That's a little li- uh, ha- uh, art hack there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now we've got like this sort of thing. Okay. How much time do we have? We have an hour. You got an hour. Whole hour. What are you going to do in an hour? This. Right, well, we're going to make this look a bit less like a glass, uh, like a plastic bottle. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how do you deal with the fact that A, it's got a a thing on the top and a line halfway down it? The bubbly line, I can't fix. Like, that is, some bottles have it, some bottles don't. We're just going to have to live with it because all the bottles in my local store have this living line. Yeah. You could make merely small jars. You could cut it off there and have a little kind of stumpy jar, and that would probably still fit everything. Mm -hmm. Um. You can, if you're being really clever, uh, fill it with air and then heat it gently so the air expands and pushes these dimples out, but it shrinks all the plastic and it's a little unpredictable. I can show you the bottle I was attempting to try that on the other day and it's just now a kind of mess. Also, mucking Um, around with hot plastic. Yeah, be careful. Um, (laughs) But... Yeah, a ribbon tied it, lovely idea. Or yeah, like you could make some clay filigree up the sides if you wanted to. You could really play with this and like hide that detail. Like, yeah. Or put your egg, like keep building your nest till your egg sits higher up so it's not kind of hidden by that. Yeah. Or find a bottle that doesn't have a bobble in it. Or find a bottle that doesn't have a bobble in it because it's really annoying. Um, or like uh, someone's done online, like, you know, like plastic vases or jars mm. you know turn them upside down you can use them like that uh there's lots of ways of doing this but you know we're in quarantine so we can get plastic bottles yeah uh um, we're going back to a foil but mm, fun um so for the stream says add a bit of gold to make it look purposeful um as yeah. i said scum bucket said so scum bucket maybe a ribbon <laughs> Talkmatic says next week glass blowing stream. <laughs> You're making like a tin foil, I guess. Hat. I'm making a tin foil bubble. So most bell jars have a kind of they have a a, a round ball that you lift at the top, usually oh, made yeah. of clear glass as well. Oh, but yeah. that's really hard to do. The way you could do that is if you've ever seen those like uh, plastic make your own baubles, uh, you could use those uh, and you know glue one of those on top and make it work that way i'm going to use clay and i'm going to make the bobble a feature okay so that it sort of doesn't look weird uh what are you here is this? so if you want to get your um people were talking about getting things really smooth uh with foil earlier if you want to get your foil really smooth and really shaped 
the great way of doing this is with a spoon, like pressure with a spoon, okay. the back of the spoon will really help smooth tin foil. Of course, I haven't got myself a spoon here at the moment, so I'm just going to do it this way. <laughs> just, yeah, manhandle it. So yeah, I've just created this ball and now I'm covering it with clay again. We're back to covering foil with clay. This is my favorite way to do things. Uh, Move it foil higher to the mark. Foil... Sorry. <laughs> You know what, I'll move my stones out of the way as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just going to cover this all with clay. And then I'm just going to create a little lid like there was on the picture because then it looks like it was kind of deliberate and I can paint it, say, silver or black at the end and it will um, it'll oh. work really well. I see. So you're going to yeah. try and actually create not just the kind of knob, <laughs> um, but like a kind of the bit that goes down as well. So it, like, like a lip. Yes. So it looks deliberate, so that it's not just like, oh, I've stuck a bubble on the top. Yeah, this it is really definitely not like... a plastic Dr. Pepper bottle. No, this is definitely a definitely a bell jar. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my um, this is my woodcrafting notebook um, where I learnt various things about woodcrafting, and I decided to draw like a I drew a a, a, a plane hand plane with all the bits. Um, yeah, I've got I've got little doodles of like basic hands working tools and what they do, That's and things amazing. things about what a kerf is um, and things like that. Um, how to make a corner rebate joint? So that's how to make a corner rebate joint. If you wanted to learn how to do that, <laughs> so um, Kim is actually you know kind of chisels. becoming secretly becoming a woodworking master. There's my chisels that I've drawn. Yet. How to make a chopping cut and a paring cut with chisels. I don't even know what any of this stuff is. No, it's just how you cut wood, isn't it? Um, yeah, but like my wood carving was completely different to this because I was doing organic kind of creatures and shapes. Yeah. Well, I guess so, my... like I learned chiseling completely differently. Yeah, and then yeah, I got things like how to neaten up your rebate joints and little measuring tricks. Um... So I'm just I'm just going to show this from above. This is what I've got now for the top of my bell jar. It looks like you've made like a. Uh... Um, you know, a baby bottle with a like a pacifier on the top. But if you imagine when that's also painted like black oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. shaped and things, it'll look lovely. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I'm know, not, I'm not dissing. Not I'm not dissing. I'm just saying it looks like a big milk bottle. It looks like a teat. Thank you, Di Dishi. A teat. <laughs> teat. That is a terrible word. I don't it's know why that word. Great word. It, it looks, looks like white. a teat. It's not a good word. Teat. <laughs> So that's what we're looking at now, and when that's dry, I will paint that like maybe black with a bit of a sheen of silver on it. I'm going very silvery for this because my I like silver, so there's definitely a silver theme going on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's that's the kind of top top knot, as it were. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're starting to get somewhere. It just makes you think. Like, I feel like people should go if if they want inspiration for shapes, they should go and look at like I don't know, like Beauty and the Beast. Like, I keep, I keep oh, thinking yeah, of the rose absolutely. and the bell jar like, and stuff like that. Someone had done this and then put a little dragon curved around the. Ball. Oh, that's a really good detail. Oh my god. So yeah, there's loads of stuff that you could then add to this. This is just basically creating a basic shape to cover up that um, bottle top and make it look more like a bell jar. Mm -hmm. But you can go mad after this. Yeah. Uh, just you know. Have fun. Yeah, I think having a dragon like coiled around the whole thing, that would be fun. So yeah, enjoy. Uh, so right, we're going to put that to one side again. And we're going to go back to some eggs. Eggs, really eggs, eggs. eggs. Eggs, 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 eggs. Are you going so for the our... black one? Yeah. Yeah, this is our... Uh... I can say words. <laughs> um... Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. This is our glue gun egg. Right, I'm back. Okay, uh, first of all, this is the bottle that I tried uh, heating to get out the kinks. Oh, damn, that did not work. So it, it it's just a bit unpredictable. Like, you can't really control it without a bit of specialist equipment. Uh, but, I mean, I'm kind of intrigued to see if I kept heating this, what would happen. Because yeah. I quite like the randomness of the shape. I mean, I feel like you could use that for something else anyway. Like, yeah. yeah. Hold it up by your uh, face we'll uh, for a second. Hold on. Hold, hold up by your face for a second because the, the camera was having a freak out there. There we go. It's probably because it's shiny. Like, focusing yeah. on shiny things is really hard. 
Um, it does look like suit. glass, though. It looks weirdly like glass. Yeah, it's it's something like the reflective quality of it when it's um, yeah. like that is fun. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is rather than like traditional dry brushing on this egg, so we're not exactly doing dry brushing, whoever tried to spoil that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pick on um, Doom Rider I'm, Slayer. I'm sorry, I'm not picking. I, I do apologize. But I have a lot of uh, spray paints. I used to really love using spray paints before I got my airbrush. Um, and spray paints are really fun. They just, you get really metallic finishes out, which you sometimes can't get through paint. So if you're using spray paint and you've got like a little plastic lid, this is my uh, plastic lid that I was using for, for my nest shape. Bottom camera, not the top camera. <laughs> plastic shape <laughs> this is my plastic lid that i was using for my nest so i'm just going to use that again because then the paint won't sink into it so we're going to shake up our can what was that a lid for is it hummus or something? that was i used it for what what do you mean in no, its, in its former, life. former life not now uh it was a tasty tub of sweets that i bought from oh. a service station okay i thought <laughs> uh, so it's hummus it's fine no, this is me. Of course it's <laughs> not hummus. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> um, spray the spray can really close. So you essentially get a little puddle of paint. Then we're going to take a cloth. So I've just a bit of scrap cloth or uh, I don't want to say toilet roll because I feel like toilet rolls are at a premium right now, but like Cloth, old t-shirts, old sheets, anything like that. Uh, Just use your mum's favourite jumper. Dab it in, and then we're going to rub it on top. Oh. And what you'll get is it will pick up the glue gun oh detail, and you'll get a bit of it going inside, not into all the creases. That's cool. And that gives you a really lovely natural effect. Oh where it's really God. shiny on the raised bit. Yeah. We get to see how beautiful my terrible glue gunning. That looks so cool. Can you hold that egg higher up to the camera? Wow. I like that. That looks amazing. So yeah, this is one of my favorite, like using spray paint with a cloth is one of my favorite techniques. I really love it. And if you had time, if you covered this with a layer of PVA before putting the glue gun on, uh, not before putting the glue gun on, after putting the paint paint on and before rubbing this, then you'd get it really, really shiny as wow. well. This is out a bit matte. Uh, but that is uh, giving a rather lovely... It, it looks very natural, I think, is why I yeah. like it. It's very metallic, but it doesn't look... Honestly... It doesn't look I am I am hypnotized by it. I'm just like, oh, shiny. <laughs> so yeah, and so you could cool. be really careful and deliberate with your glue gunning. I, you know, I as I've said on all these crafts, I've rushed them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you'll end up with something rather lovely like that. Oh, hold it, hold it higher up to the camera so we can really see. Wow, that looks cool. That definitely looks like something a dragon has pooped out. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I feel like this should be in front of the cam now. Can we just uh, so you've got a black background and not me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold it forward towards the camera a little bit more. There we go. So yeah, if you imagine that base properly sanded and finished, so it looks like a base and not a bunch of pieces of foam stuck together, mm -hmm. and you get this really coloured and nicely and build the nest up, mm -hmm. then you're starting to get something that on your shelf is going to look beautiful. Yeah. So um, um, would you would you recommend painting the base as well? Uh, yes, if you're. I mean, yes, if you're painting that, I would match the top to the base. Mm. So they look like they come together. So they look like they're, you know, they're part of a bell jar set. Yeah. Um, and then that will really tie it all together and make it like one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if we can do a little bit of painting on our foam egg. Yeah, well, we've got about half an hour left. Around. So. Okay, let's do a bit of, let's do some little other paint effects on our other eggs to kind of show off 
yeah this is, you know gonna be a classic case of almost finished by the end of the stream and then i'll post a finished picture of it on instagram at a later date yeah so we're gonna go back to our um back to our shiny egg our pin egg mm. which if you look now next to this one it just feels a bit flat like it doesn't have the detail and the depth i think that you get from the different colors in this one uh -huh. so we're just going to emphasize some of the detail we're going to stab this on a stick so that we can put it in the jar it's going to be use a teriyaki might bowl a... might have to go in a mug uh they do get heavy when they've got yeah i can imagine so whereas polystyrene eggs otherwise are very light just put it in there. Oh. Right, I'm gonna go for a sort of bluish green egg, I think. Egg finish. I haven't coloured these yet. That's nice. So the Arteza paints are great, but they are not quite the same colour as the label on the bottle. So I've been oh, yeah. slowly going through and putting painting the the top the colour of the paint. Yeah, that's but I haven't done idea. them all yet, which yeah. means I'm sort of still winging it with some of them. So let's have a look. No, that's too green. So I've just squeezed some PVA or some white glue into a tub. Bit of PVA and then a bit of paint. And I'm going to mix those together. And basically what I'm doing is I'm creating glue just because paint on its own won't adhere to the shininess so well. Okay. So this is a great way if you ever want... Um, create like really shiny paint effects as well this okay. is great for this but this is just going to create a kind of thicker more viscous paint that will really get down inside the cracks of um this egg mm, cracks get get in the cracks <laughs> get in the cracks soak inside the cracks uh, cracks is a funny word and we are going to go a bit you know dry brushy mad here we're just going to stab it in a lot what is, really what is, heavily at the bottom. What does dry brushing mean? So dry brushing means you don't use much water with your mix. And what you get is something that can be kind of take your cloth again and you can rub it off and it will just get left. Oh. I really need a bit of water to do that, but it'll just get left in those kind of cracks. Okay, hold it a bit higher. There we go. Yeah, okay, I see. So... Um, actually, if you've got cotton, cotton wool, that's perfect for this, for rubbing off. Okay. So what you'll be left with is just that effect. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's just kind of adding that, you know, creating that extra depth and just giving it a bit more... I mean, it's the same as kind of doing like a black wash, like yeah. we did with our dragons. We did a wash over the top. But if you do a wash on something this shiny, it will just slip off. Yeah, it will just yeah. wash is fairly watery. Dry brushing means just keeping your materials as dry as possible okay. so that it really kind of adheres to And that's why we've um, added a bit of glue just to really give it that holding power. Yeah. So Kitashi Mikaze says dry brushing is used a lot for weathering effects on miniatures. Very true. Yeah. I dry think, yeah. brushing and washes. I've definitely heard Mark uh, talk about it before. Let's just have a look at this this dry brushed egg. That looks cool. I like it. It's so hard to realise that that's like drawing pins. Yeah, and just just kind of adding in a, a bit. little bit of that. Back a bit. There we go. There you go. A little bit of that colour just kind of helps pull it back a bit from being drawing pins and just gives it a bit more, bit more detail and a bit of kind of yeah. bit of interest. Yeah. And you'll see it kind of more when light hits it and things and in the shadow. And it, I left it at the top and then really kind of gone quite heavy at the bottom. Yeah, so kind of brought some shading into it. Yeah. So, uh, is that on screen? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it there. So. Yeah, camera's not picking it up. It looks a bit more intense. Yeah. I'll try and get a good photo of it later. But yeah, so that's I just do something like that with uh, with with the scale egg. Yeah. Uh, we can have a little play with our foam now. So you got about fifteen minutes left, and then we got to hand over okay. to the three boys. Okay. Well, we've still got some of this paint left. So I'm trying to decide uh, if my uh, bladder can hold on for fifteen minutes. 
I'm I'm in a similar situation. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, Kita Shimikaze is trolling us in chat, going, "Isn't Niagara Falls lovelier this time of year?" Why? Why? Do you want us to leave? Do you want to miss out? Uh, apparently, Virgin's being funny again. So uh, if Becky cuts out, we'll that's, uh, that's we'll what we as long as can. <laughs> Hopefully, it holds on for the next fifteen minutes. Come on, Virgin, you can do it. So are you painting that with the PVA um, mixture or is that just straight up no, this green? No, just, just straight paint uh, going on to like, uh, you know, EVA foam, you could prime it and you get a probably more even coverage, like you can strokes and it's not adhering as well as it should. Um, so a primer coat, like spray primer coat would be great here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where my primer spray is. At the, I think it's in the bathroom. <laughs> Bathroom where is where I do a lot of my painting because uh, it's easy to ventilate. So paint Fair. a lot in there. And then would you um, would you go back and shade these later? Like maybe try and, like like similar with the dry brushing that you were doing on the dra drawing pin. Egg. Yeah, I done. Um, I definitely go back and give these like you know a bit of uh, dry brushing and probably a wash, a darker wash to get into the cracks. But I also the thing I really wanted to do with this one is with is emphasize these ridges mm -hmm. so i'm just going to take a bit of silver paint again you could do this with the rubbing effect i just you cannot do the rubbing on top of anything that's wet okay so it needs to be completely dry for that to work okay. so i can't use that here although i probably would usually and i just rub along that that ridge Okay, so these are the little spines that you created earlier by pinching the foam before you glued it. Pinching the foam and just gluing, putting some glue on the back to hold that pinch. I mean, foam is really good in that it holds a lot of shapes you put it into, so it'll hold a bit of the pinch until you straighten it out. It just keeps it kind of... And there we go already looking quite nice there nice yeah i see what you mean yeah so like i mean the paint job on the green is good <laughs> ignore that but yeah that's just kind of adding that emphasizing that little uh little dish that we've made just yeah. to kind of it's just giving things depth like i think the more depth you can give to something the more realistic it looks because things are not flat colors things always have interest to them in nature like so yeah. just try and always add details never like you can block paint sure but if you want things to really try and add as much depth then that means highlights and lowlights so black washing and dry brushing for lowlights and then little just hints and rubbing for highlights nice that's um, what we've sort of created today in basic yeah so um, we'll look a lot shinier when finished yeah we need a bit more time to do like uh, paint the top bit paint the bottom bit and assemble it together um so that's the whole idea is that this is like a, a kind of a tutorial just to give you the basics and you guys can go out and uh, really kind of go to town with customizing it how you want to uh, customize your little dragon nest egg. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions at all, now's the time to ask them. Um, I'm going to edit this up to go on YouTube um, and then Becky um, will put written a written material list and written instructions list on her Kofi. So if I check the link, link is in chat now. Wait, no, that's uh, Becky's Etsy store. That's the wrong link. Um, uh, that second one is the Kofi page. Could you make me slightly bigger? Yes. And I'll show off the link. Hold on. There we go. Okay, go. Because I know people have been talking about what other things I've been doing as crafts. So this is my diver's helmet. That is so cool. Um, yeah. So it's a work in progress. Uh, and you've hand cut that, haven't you? I have hand cut that, which I sort of can't believe. And I so wish I'd had, like, just, I wish I'd had my makerspace open for, like, a week. Yeah, so yeah. It, they were right to close. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. But, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on right now. And that is going to be a VR experience. And we'll all be finished to look metallic. So, yeah. a little picture at the back there. Um, nice. Yeah, so that's 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 one of the big my big lockdown projects. Yeah. So here we go. We've done past us. Have done a future us um, time jump, and here is a picture of Becky's finished dragon nest. Now, so you can see in, in the wherever I've put it on the screen, 
Maybe it's there. Maybe it's there. Uh, this is what it looks like. Be sure to send us your creations. Um, and follow Becky on at Becky Pepperdine on Twitter. And um, yeah, if you need instructions, written instructions, check out her Kofi link in the video description below. We're going to say goodbye now. Bye, everybody.